Hey everybody, Professor Klein back here in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University to bring you a video on the forearm bones. Alright, let's jump right into it. And when I'm talking forearm bones, I'm talking radius, I'm talking ulna. We got the humerus up here, another video on the humerus. We got the hand down here, another video on the hand, but we're focused on these two right here. And if I were to pop off this arm here with the humerus, this would be the radius, this would be the ulna, and you can always tell the radius from the ulna by lateral and medial. So notice, if you can see the hand, the thumb side, the thumb side is always lateral from the anatomical position. So this has to be the radius right here. We're gonna talk about a few ways to tell the difference between these two bones, but lateral and medial is the first way. So lateral, talking radius, pinky finger medial, we're talking ulna. But let's pop these bones off further and bring them on over here to see really what's going on. Let's start with the ulna. The ulna, you probably notice this U-shape in the ulna. This is called the trochlear notch. Trochlear notch. What is that called, the trochlear notch? Well, that's because the ulna articulates with something called the trochlea, which we know from the other video, the trochlea is this kind of trough-shaped bony landmark of the humerus. And the trochlear notch is gonna fit right in to that trochlea and form the humoral ulnar joint, which is a hinge joint of the elbow. So see how that fits in nice and neat there. Additionally though, there's something called the coronoid process up here. So this little bump part is the coronoid process. All right, if we keep going down, we can see a little bit of a smooth area here. This smooth area is called the radial notch. Let's try to give it a, a side view, front view here of the radial notch, because this radial notch is going to be important later when we talk about the joint formed between the ulna and the radius. And see how this circular radial head connects with that radial notch? That's what forms the proximal radial ulnar joint. There's also, whoops, there's also another one here called the ulnar tuberosity small bump on the ulna. If I flip it over posteriorly, this bump right here is called the olecranon. Some people call it the olecranon. I call it the olecranon. Two different pronunciations for it. This is that bump. Ah, in the back of your elbow, I do it all for the videos here, that bump in the back of the video that you sometimes hit and cause a little pain back there, that is the olecranon of your ulna bone. What else we got here? Well, technically this is the lateral side, lateral surface, but it's also called the inner osseous border. We're going to see what that means coming up here very soon, inner osseous border leading down to the more distal aspect of the ulna. Now notice, the ulna is wider proximally and more narrow distally. And there's a little bump, you guys see that little bump right there? This would be the most medial part of it, and it's called the styloid process of the ulna. Styloid process of the ulna. Take a second to feel that one. If you feel the pinky side of your wrist and you push in, you can feel that styloid process of the ulna. And a great way to study is to palpate or feel these bony landmarks on your actual body. So feel that styloid process of the ulna. All right, let's jump from the ulna to the radius and bring that radius in here. And they do line up pretty much side by side to make the forearm but again two bones here and if we look what do you notice is the key difference between the ulna and the radius let me grab my magic probe right here and we can see that the radius has a more rounded 
head. I'm gonna give you a 360, well, a 180 of that radial head. Let me give you a 360 here as it goes all the way around in a rounded circular shape, but flat on the top. You guys see that flat part? That flat part is called the fovea. Fovea right here, kind of flatter part. And anytime you have a real flat, kind of smooth surface, it's probably gonna articulate with something. And that would be because this fovea articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. You guys remember the capitulum from the humerus video? This ball shaped structure here is the capitulum. And notice how that fovea comes in and forms the humoral radial joint right there. And we know there's three joints of the elbow. We got the humoral ulnar, we got the humoral radial, but there's also the radial ulnar joint. And in this case, it's a proximal radial ulnar joint because we are proximal with these bones. And if we got a radial head, then you know we've got to have a radial neck right in here. See where it narrows? This is the radial neck and it does go all the way around just like the radial head is a 360 this right here is a 360 as well of the radial neck it does lead out to a big bump on the radius called the radial tuberosity you guys see that big bump let me move the probe and there it is there's a huge radial tuberosity bump now in this case if I jump to the inside, this is the interosseous border. Let me hit it with both of them here. The interosseous border of the radius, the interosseous border of the ulna. What does that mean? Well, let's travel over to an awesome textbook here to show you that when it says interosseous border, what it means is that's the side that's gonna connect the interosseous membrane. There's this membrane, bunch of connective tissue holding these two bones together. Otherwise they would fall further apart. So the interosseous membrane is connected to each interosseous border. All right, couple last things for you here. Coming down distally on the forearm bones. Again, over here, ulna, over here, radius. Remember this small bump? You guys remember what that's called? This is the styloid process of the ulna well guess what there's a similar bump over here but this is on the radius so this one is called the styloid process of the radius it's a little bit bigger bump as you can feel the difference between the styloid process of the ulna pinky side and then the styloid process of the radius on that thumb side that thumb side one feel that on your own wrist is a lot bigger than the medial side check it out and you'll also notice that the radius proximally is small but distally is larger so there's this inverse relationship between the ulna and the radius where the ulna proximally is large but the radius is small proximally but down here the ulna distally is small or narrow and the radius is now more wide. So it switches as you go proximal to distal. All right, this little notch is called the ulnar notch of the radius, ulnar notch of the radius. And this over here is the head of the ulna. So the head of the ulna now meets with the ulnar notch of the radius to form that distal radial ulnar joint. But I want to flip the radius anterior to see our last bony landmark here. Let's see if it'll stay anterior. There it is. All right, this is called the dorsal tubercle. You guys see that? This little bump that is anterior, so we're on the anterior surface, is the dorsal tubercle. Different than the styloid process. See the styloid process where the probe is right now? 
that's different than the dorsal tubercle right here. All right, this has been your video on the forearm bones. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Tell me some more videos to make for you guys. What do you want to learn in the anatomy lab with all the models that we have here? Let me know in the comments and I'll make a video just for you. I'm Professor Klein from the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. Thanks for watching.